what we found is that the response rate um, to mobocertinib was higher um, than patients um, who were treated um, with uh, either chemotherapy or chemotherapy and immunotherapy, or maybe um, some of the EGFR TKIs that were out there. So with mobocertinib, the response rate was around 40%, whereas the response rate um, to chemotherapy was in the 15% um, range. Um, remembering that this is looking at patients who had second line therapy, not patients who had first line therapy. We also looked at the progression free survival for patients who are on um, mobocertinib compared to patients who were um, on chemotherapy and the medium progression free survival was almost doubled um, around seven months with mobocertinib compared to around um, four months with chemotherapy. And so while recognizing that this is a heterogeneous patient population, because it is data from flat iron and we may not have some of the nuances of the patient population, this does give us data to suggest that mobocertinib is potentially a more effective treatment as in the second line setting for patients who have exon 20 insertions than um, chemotherapy or the current approved um, EGFR TKIs. There is an ongoing um, phase three trial that is comparing mobocertinib to chemotherapy um, in patients who have exon 20 insertions. I personally, we're not participating in that study in our, at our institution. Um, I think it's going to take a while to accrue. Um, because it is a um, fairly uh, rare mutation. Um, and, you know, I, it'll be interesting to see uh, where we end up using mobocertinib because that trial is actually going to be looking at the drug first line rather than second line, because as we've seen from multiple other trials that have been out there, if a patient has a driver mutation and they get a drug that targets that driver, they tend to do much better than um, with traditional um, chemotherapy.